Hi everyone, in this short series we'll be looking at creating a scene-based editor tool for constructing 2D shapes. One possible use for this might be defining regions to quickly place props into a scene. Anyway, the point is of course more just about learning how to create editor tools in general so that you can make whatever you need. Just to be clear, I'll only be covering the editor scripting side of things in these videos, so for some of the background stuff like triangulating the shapes, I'll be providing some scripts for download. Okay, now the goal for this first episode is very simple. Just want to be able to left click in the scene view to add in points and have these points be joined together by dotted lines to show the outline of the shape and also to have this work with Unity's undo and redo functionality. Okay, let's start by creating two C sharp scripts. The first called something like shape creator and the second uh, something like shape editor. And this shape editor script is going to go into the editor folder. So let me create that quickly. Drag that in there and I'll open up the shape creator. So for the time being, this is just going to hold a public list of vector threes for all of the points in our shape. And I'll just initialize that straight away to a new list of vector threes. And I don't want this to show up in the inspector. So I'll just add this hide in inspector attribute here. All right, you can save that and head over to the shape editor script. So uh, we're going to need to use the Unity editor namespace. And this will inherit from editor instead of mono behavior. And we need to say that this is a custom editor of the shape creator script. So type of shape creator, like so. All right, and then to actually start drawing in the scene, we're going to use this on scene GUI method. So this method is called automatically whenever there's any sort of input in the scene. So obviously things like key presses or mouse movement, but it's also called separately for layout and repaint events, uh, which we'll worry about a little bit later on. For now, we can get the current event uh, using the event class, and I'll just call this GUI event and set this equal to event.current. All right, I'd like to start by getting the position of the mouse. So we can use GUI event.mouse position, but this is just the position of the mouse in screen coordinates. So we want to convert this to world coordinates. Now, the way we'll do this is by first constructing a ray. I'll call this the mouse ray by using handle utility dot uh, GUI point to world ray. So the GUI point will just be the GUI event dot mouse position. Now, array is of course made up of two values, its origin, which is its position in 3D space, and its direction. What we want to do is choose a height for our draw plane and then project this mouse ray onto the draw plane. And that will be our draw point. The problem, of course, is how to actually do this mathematically. So we know that if we start at the origin of the ray and move in the direction of the ray for some distance, then we're going to arrive at the draw point. Unfortunately, there are two unknowns in this equation, the draw point and the distance, but we do know something about the draw point. We know its height, since that's just a value we chose. So we can rewrite this equation using the y component of all of the vectors. So origin dot y plus direction dot y multiplied by the distance is equal to h, the y component of the draw point. So if we simply rearrange this, we can find that the distance is equal to h minus the y component of the origin, all divided by the y component of the direction. We then just plug that value into there to find our draw point. Okay, so back in the script, I'll create a float called uh, draw plane height. Might as well just set that to zero, I guess. 
and then float distance to draw plane is going to be, as we saw, the draw plane height minus the ray origin dot y, and all of that divided by uh, the ray direction dot y. Then our actual mouse position is going to be mouse ray dot origin plus mouse ray dot direction multiplied by the distance to the draw plane. And if you prefer, we can actually rewrite this in a slightly simpler fashion, which is just mouse ray dot get point passing in the distance to the draw plane. Okay, now what I'd like to do is when we press the left mouse button, I want to add a new point to the shape creator's points list. Uh, and that point is of course going to be the mouse position. So let's say that if GUI event dot uh, type is equal to event type dot mouse down and GUI event dot button is equal to zero, uh, which means that it was the left mouse that was pressed down, then we'll want to add a point to the shape creator's point list, but currently we don't have a reference to the shape creator. So let's make one up at the top here. Let's say shape creator, just call it shape creator, and this needs to be assigned to whenever the editor becomes enabled. So just down at the bottom here, I'm going to create void on enable. And when it's enabled, we'll say shape creator is equal to target. So that's the object being inspected uh, as defined by our custom editor attribute up here. And we'll convert this from an object to a shape creator. Okay, so now in this little if statement, we can say shape creator dot points dot add, and we'll add our mouse position. To test if this is working, let's just have a debug dot log here, and we'll print out add plus the mouse position. Okay, let's save that, go into Unity, and I'm going to create a new empty game object and just assign the shape creator script to that. So now if I left click in the scene, it will print out add and the position of the mouse at that moment. But irritatingly, of course, when we left click, we're also deselecting our object. And so uh, we're no longer on the editor and we'd have to reselect the object to click and add in a second point. Now, the way we can get around this is in the onscene GUI method, we create a default control with handle utility dot add default control. And this just means that if we don't click on anything, then it's going to pick up this invisible default control as being pressed on, and so it won't deselect our object. Now, we need to give this default control a control ID and we can generate a unique ID for it using the GUI utility dot get control ID. And we just need to give us a focus type, uh, which basically just means can it be uh, selected using the keyboard? And in this case, it can't. So we just use focus type dot passive. All right. So we now have that default control. And we only need to add the default control, by the way, if the GUI event type is equal to event type dot layout. So I'll just include that quickly. All right, so now we save this, go into Unity, wait for that to compile, and we can now press around and we get our add printout and the object remains selected. Okay, let's go back to the editor script and I want to draw in each of these points we've been adding. So I'm gonna use a for loop uh, from i equals zero to i less than the shape creator dot points dot count. Uh, I'm not using a for each loop for this because we'll actually need the index a little bit later on. Uh, so here I'm going to say handles dot draw solid disk. So I'm going to draw that disk of course at the current point location. So shape creator dot points with an index of i. The normal will be vector three dot up so that the disk is just pointing upwards. And I'll use say 0.5 for the radius. Let's then save that and go back into Unity 
And once this compiles, we should see disks popping up for uh, all the clicking around I did earlier. And if I left click in the scene now, we'd of course hope that a new disk will appear. But if we do this a bunch of times, you'll notice that uh, it's not always quite working. Sometimes the disk is just a little bit delayed in appearing, and sometimes it doesn't actually appear at all. And we have to do something like right-click drag to change the scene view to actually force the editor to repaint the scene. To fix this, we're going to ask the editor to do an immediate repaint whenever we left click. So uh, going back into the script, I'm going to create a new bool called Needs Repaint up at the top here. And whenever we click to add in a new point, I'm going to set Needs Repaint equal to true. And then somewhere down here, I'll say if it needs to be repainted, then handle utility dot repaint. Okay, so if we save this now, go back into Unity, and once that's compiled, we should be able to click, and we'll see the points being added in instantly. Now, it would be nice to have this set up with Unity's undo functionality. So let's quickly come into here, and before we add the point to the shape creator, we're going to say undo.record object, and we want to record the shape creator object, and we can give a name to this action. So I'll just call this add point. All right. So very roughly how this works is it records the state of the object over here and then compares it to the state of the object after we modify it to figure out what changed. So let's quickly remove this debug.log, save this, go into Unity to test this out. I'm just gonna clear the console here and also reset the shape creator to just get rid of all of those points. And I can now click to add in a new point. And if we go into the edit menu, you can see it says undo add point. And if I undo that, then the point disappears. And I can of course use the keyboard shortcut and also use command shift Z to redo what we've undone. Like so, so that's pretty nice. Let's now go back into the script and get those points joined up with dotted lines. So in this for loop where we're drawing the disks, let's create a vector three called something like next point, which will be equal to shape creator dot points with an index of i plus one. But then of course we need to wrap that around to zero if it reaches the number of points in the list. So I'll write mod shape creator dot points dot count. All right. And we can then say handles dot draw dotted line from shape creator dot points with an index of i to the next point. And we need to specify the distance between the dots. So I'll just use a value of four for that. And I'd like to have these drawn in different colors. So before I draw the dotted line, I'll say handles dot color is equal to color dot black and I'll draw the disks in white. Okay, let's save this and see how that looks. So we've got these dotted lines here. Let me quickly reset this and draw a little shape. All right, that looks cool. We've now implemented everything that we set out to implement this episode, but I'd like to spend a little bit of time just tidying the script up a little bit. So the first thing I want to do is move all of this drawing code, so this entire for loop, into its own method called draw. So I'll paste that in there. And once we've drawn everything, we can also just say needs repaint is now false. All right, so at the top of onscene GUI, we can say if the, uh, if the current GUI event is a repaint event, then we're going to want to call the draw method. Uh, otherwise, if it's a layout event, then we can add the default control. And if it's not a repaint or a layout event, then it's going to be a input event. And so we're going to be calling a new method called handle input, which is going to take in event GUI event. And it's going to do all of this stuff. So we just need to call that in here, handle input, 
and pass in the GUI event. The only time it's going to need a repaint is after it's handled some input, so we can uh, stick that in there as well. All right, let me just delete this white space. And that is sufficiently tidied up for now. So let's save that and make sure that that little bit of refactoring hasn't uh, actually broken anything. So let me reset this and just try creating another shape. And it all still seems to be working. One slightly irritating thing though is if I hold down Alt and then left click drag to uh, shift the view around, it obviously adds in a new point. So let me quickly fix that by going into the handle input here. And in this mouse down if statement, you can add another condition that the GUI event dot modifiers must be equal to event modifiers dot none. So if I come back here and now alt left click, it doesn't add a new point in. And if I just regularly click, then it does. Cool, that is everything for this episode. We'll of course continue working on this in episode two. So until then, cheers.